Hey guys, this looks like a fun one. We're given the areas of two triangles inside of a semicircle, and it wants to know what is the area of that semicircle. This is day 13 of our Agvent calendar. For the month of December, we're going to solve 31 Katrina Ag puzzles in 31 days. If you want to try this one, pause it right now, because I'm going to solve it in three, two, one. First, I want to break up these distances and give them variables. Let's go X for this part, Y for this one, and Z for this one. They're asking us for the area of the semicircle. Let's write an equation for that. The area of a semicircle is pi radius squared divided by two. But in the place of the radius, let's do half of the diameter. And the diameter for this is x plus z. So the area is equal to pi x plus z over two squared divided by two. This looks important, let's put a box around it. And this is what we're trying to solve for. Next, let's use up this eight and the 32. The area of this triangle is one half base times height, which is one half x times y, and that's equal to eight. And this other triangle is also one half base times height, so it'll be one half z times y is equal to the area of 32. And let's rearrange this to keep things alphabetical. And these two area formulas look important, let's put a box around them. So right now we have three variables, x, y, and z. We need to find one more equation. So let's inspect this closer. In this right triangle, let's name this angle a degrees. That means the other angle has to be 90 minus a degrees. And then since this triangle is sitting on the diameter, that makes this 90 degrees. Here's the notes right here. Anytime a triangle stands on a diameter like this, this is a 90 degree angle. Since this is a, this is 90 degrees, that makes this 90 minus a. And then in this right triangle, since this is 90 minus a, that makes this a degrees. So we have two triangles with three pairs of congruent angles. That means the two triangles are similar. Let's align their orientation like this. Since we know these two triangles are similar, that means their sides are proportional. We can do the bottom over the side equals the bottom over the side, or x over y equals y over z. And this can be our third equation. Let's put a box around it. I'm kind of excited about this. We have three equations and three variables. I don't think we need to look at the triangles anymore. We've just turned this into an algebra problem. I don't really like fractions, so to get rid of this fraction, let's multiply both sides by two. Same thing for this equation, let's multiply both sides by two. And then down here to get rid of the fractions, we gotta multiply both sides by yz. For the first equation, two times one half will cancel each other out, and eight times two is 16. For this equation, these will cancel each other out, and 32 times two is 64. And then down on this one, this y and this y will cancel each other out, and we're left with zx. And for this one, the z and z will cancel each other out, and we're left with y times y, which is y squared. Now we've cleaned up our equations. Let's bring back the boxes. For these first two equations, we can get rid of the y's by doing this row divided by this row. So we end up with yz over xy equals 64 over 16. And now this y and this y will cancel each other out, and we're left with zx. And then 64 divided by 16 is 4. Now to get rid of this fraction, let's multiply both sides by x. This x and this x will cancel each other out, and we're left with z is equal to 4x. This looks important, let's put a box around it. So next let's play with this zx equals y squared. Up here we have z equals 4x, so in the place of this z, let's plug in 4x. And then 4x times x is 4x squared. From here, we can square root both sides. And square root of 4x squared is the same thing as square root of 4 times square root of x squared. Square root of 4 is equal to 2. And before we do the square roots of these, we need to note that x and y are both positive numbers because they're side lengths of our triangles. So since x is positive, the square root of x squared is just positive x. And then since y is positive, square root of y squared is just y. Does that make sense why? So now we know 2x equals y. How exciting. Wait, wait, we're not done yet. Uh, let's put a box around it. So from here, let's take this x, y equals 16 and copy it down here. And I wanna substitute in the place of this y, the 2x. So let's rearrange these and in the place of the y, we'll plug in 2x. 2x times x is 2x squared. And let's divide both sides of the equation by two. This two and this two will cancel each other out and 16 divided by two is equal to eight. So we have x squared is equal to eight. This looks important, let's put a box around it. Now I think we have everything we need to evaluate the area. So we know that z is equal to four x, so in the place of this z, let's plug in four x. And then x plus four x is five x. 
For the next step, this exponent will distribute to the 5, the x, and the 2. That will give us 5 squared, x squared, 2 squared. This 5 squared is equal to 25, and 2 squared is equal to 4. Let's bring the pi up here and the 4 down here. And now we have 25 pi x squared over 2 times 4. 2 times 4 is equal to 8. So we have area equals 25 pi x squared over 8. But right here, we know that x squared is equal to 8. So for this x squared, let's plug in 8. Now this 8 and this 8 will cancel each other out. And now we have the area equals 25 pi. Let's give it a label of units squared and put a box around it. And this is the answer to our question. The area of this semicircle is 25 pi units squared. And we figured all that out using this information. How exciting. Here's the puzzle for day 14. It says, what fraction of the semicircle is not covered by these three identical circles? So in other words, we want the ratio of yellow over total semicircle. How exciting.